doesn't count. Simpsons did it only applies to TV show plots. Are you kidding me? It should count even more. Season 5, episode 10, Siegfried and Roy are mauled by their own white tiger. Michael, we are aware of the episode. It's just best not to make light of something. Okay, like, look, there's an episode of Bob's Burgers where Bob enlists the help of an arcade nerd to help him get better at a video game. Simpsons did it. Right, or King of the Hill where Peggy goes to the bowling alley and she's ashamed of her big feet. Simpsons did it. I actually like to play Simpsons did Simpsons. It's the advanced version. Example, season seven, Homer gets hired to be Burns' new lackey and Smithers gets jealous. Simpsons did it, season two. Is this a Simpsons night? Are we finally doing a Simpsons night? Oh yes, please. Really, it felt like we were going towards famously predicted tiger maulings. Did we, no? Fine, whatever. All right, but let's put a limit on this. If we cover all 418 seasons of the show, it's gonna get unfocused and off the rails. Let's restrict it to episodes before The Principal and the Poppers. That was the episode most of the writers agree ended the Golden Age. Matt Groening even called it a mistake on the DVD commentary. A dagger through my heart! And no Halloween specials and no clip shows. Not canon. Agreed. Agreed. Oh, if we really want to ruin it for ourselves because we're dead inside, Lisa was sad like a lot. I'm too sad. I'm done, for you were a general of my hopes and dreams, and now I have none. Lisa, if you could have one wish, what would it be? To shut myself off from the world and never be seen by human eyes again. Happy birthday to me. Like, a real lot. I mean, they always play it off like it's resolved by the end of the episode, but it never is. She's gonna grow up with some deep-seated psychological problems. She's the forgotten middle child. This is where she prints her weekly feminist newsletter. No, my freakish little huh? friend, that's a seagull. Uh. Lisa, please, I can't hear the announcer. Somebody needs to emancipate her fast. Her first kiss is with Nelson Muntz, very obvious bright kid with rock-bottom self-esteem issues. She's gonna end up dating a series of assholes who don't deserve her. Yeah, day, Lisa. This is my point. They're all pretty messed up, though. I mean, yeah, sad Lisa, but Bart is way smarter than anyone realizes. Now is the winter of our discontent. Twelfth Hall. Bank it off the pink tombstone. Nirvana. A state of bliss attained through the extinction of the self. Oh, now I know how George Washington felt when he surrendered Fort Necessity to the French in 1754. What? He can learn foreign languages left and right. And when he sets his mind to something, he's great at it. Yo-yo, soapbox derbying, mixing drinks. Plus, in the first two Sideshow Bob episodes, Bart makes incredible deductive leaps and solves the case. When Aunt Selma lights up her cigarette at the end of MacGyver, she'll be blown to kingdom come. The kid's right. Mm -hmm. How do you figure we missed that? Also, in the one flash forward that wasn't a gypsy's prediction or a fantasy sequence, we learn that Bart actually does become Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. But he's not that smart. I mean, he can't even keep a C average to go to Camp Krusty. He's empirically dumber than a hamster. Lisa proved it. Yeah, he's clearly got some sort of ADHD. I always knew you had personality. The doctor said it was hyperactivity, but I knew better. But his dad also strangles him a lot, which I don't think is good for a kid. I have a kid, and he does not like being strangled. Hmm, not even a little. In season four, we find out that Bart starts getting neglected when Lisa is born, and then at the end of the episode, that is not resolved. I hate you. Does Homer keep Bart in the basement under a laundry basket with rocks on top of it? Am I remembering that right? Because that is some child called itch Where they briefly homeschooled Bart, giving him the attention and the discipline that he needs, he thrives. Also, Probably needs glasses. Probably misses his old glasses. You mean it ain't me noggin, it's me peepers? No, he just needs a genuine interest. When he wants to be a Boy Scout, he becomes a knot-tying expert and earns all of the badges, despite a father who sends him death threats calling him scum. Maggie's also a genius. What? What? Don't! All right, you win round seven. But she also shot a guy and knocked her dad out with a mallet. That's the kind of thing that labels a kid as sociopath pretty quickly. Marge is a part of the problem too. She's an enabler, just take a look at her marriage. Marge threatens to leave Homer for very good reasons, no less than four times in eight seasons. Oh, it's true, it's all true. Homer, don't need a Sorry. And Homer never addresses his problems, and yet she always takes him back. Oh, Homer. Throws back the big catfish for her. After sneaking out and catching it, he caught it. He did the one thing that he promised not to do, the thing that represented his respect for her. All this fish represents is just how selfish you are. In the Space Coyote episode, she begs him not to drink. 
and then he does. And then he goes missing and ends up at a lighthouse. And then she goes to the lighthouse and calls him her soulmate, even though he didn't learn anything. In fact, he specifically went to the lighthouse to find someone else to be his soulmate. She has to win him back after he betrays her by getting drunk in front of their children and then disappearing all night. And that's bad? My family doesn't know I spent all night at this diner. Is that a problem? It's Freudian. Freud is largely considered bullshit by modern psychology. Yeah, I don't mean it's loosely psychological though. I mean it's, it's literally Freudian. Bart is the id. He's constantly driven by base desires. Now's our chance to be bad. Jingle bells. Oh, 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 oh. In these crazy topsy-turvy times, who's to say what's right or wrong? But right now, my gut's telling me bleed gramps dry. And Lisa is the ego, or the intellect. And this perpetual motion machine she made today is a joke. It just keeps going faster and faster. And she's capable of abstract thought, but also these existential crises. Please, Lisa, I thought you loved me. Would it make any difference at all if I never existed? I'm losing my perspicacity! We've degraded ourselves and set back the children's rights movement for decades to come. We're great at a party, Lisa, really great. That's why her and Bart work so well together when they're solving a problem, because she is the philosopher and he is the pragmatist. What's the sound of one hand clapping? Piece of cake. And then Marge is the superego because she's only concerned with what society thinks of the family. Doesn't matter how you feel inside, you know? It's what shows up on the surface that counts. So today, while the rest of you were out being different, I did a very good job of fitting in. And then Homer is the brainstem. This is starting to sound suspiciously like my high school book report on Lord of the Flies. Oh, I have a lot of nerdy, obscure evidence to support this. Okay, try not to get a boner, but go on. I'll get a boner if I damn well please. Season one, episode two. Lisa literally reads the dictionary definition of id. Id, along with the ego and the super ego, one of three components of the psyche. Later in that same episode, Sigmund Freud gets mentioned in Bart's genius class. Freud shows how childhood shapes our subconscious mind. Season two. Kent Brockman is talking to Dr. Marvin Monroe, mentions Freud and says that he gave us an insight into the human mind. To give us an insight into the human mind. No joke, there's no joke in that line. It's just a thing that he says. Weird line to include in a show that normally turns every line into a joke. Season three, episode 18. The guidance counselor that used to have a picture of Bart on his wall when he thought Bart was a genius, that picture has been replaced with Sigmund Freud. How can you possibly? What? I can close my eyes and watch any episode I want. It's all up here, baby. So, that is several references to Freud's work in just the first few seasons. I think that's intentional. I don't know! It seems kind of sophisticated coming from the show that brought us itchy and scratchy. Speaking of which, have you noticed how violent Springfield is? It's like the Quentin Tarantino universe, where insane violence is a cornerstone of all media. Ooh. Death sports. Ooh, death by knockout, blood on the ice. There's blood everywhere. I, I just talked to her. <laughs> Those aren't the sucks she came in with. Oh no, I've killed Wilson. So you mean America, God bless it. No, but even more than us though, I don't think in the real world, a movie about a mouse disemboweling a cat over and over would win nine Oscars. After eight months and nine Academy Awards. Maybe with Meryl Streep is itchy, but still. It's like in the Simpsons verse, when Chester Lampwick made Steamboat Willie about murdering an Irishman, he set animation off on this perverse path of ultraviolence. So it's true. Some cartoons do encourage violence. Ugh, ow! Yeah, but I'm not so sure that Itchy and Scratchy is meant for kids. Homer watches it when Bart is a baby, and presumably before. And they use a parental advisory warning at the end of one of the episodes. Man, what a great show! God, I know, right? This love of violence affects the society at large, not just their cartoons. The arcade games are more violent than ours. You can buy a bucket of beer for any sporting event, most of which end in a giant riot. This is a world where people cheer when someone gets electrocuted, or when Mother Goose gets decapitated, or when Krusty the Clown has a heart attack live on stage. This is a world where the hospital has an entire wing dedicated to children who injured themselves imitating things that they saw on TV. I won't even subject you to the horrors of our Three Stooges ward. Gee, I never realized TV was such a dangerous influence. The McBain franchise. That's way more violent than the Schwarzenegger movies that they're parodying. They even cheered when they crushed Shelbyville, presumably killing hundreds. And don't forget, it's okay to strangle your kid. <laughs> 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 Man, 
what a great show. God, I know. Side note, on Rainier Wolfcastle's late night talk show, his band leader is a black dude named Scoey, but in the McBain movie, his partner that gets shot up is a clearly different black dude also named Scoey. Do Simpsons writers think Scoey is a stereotypical black dude name? Maybe violence isn't a big deal because some of the characters are clearly immoral. I mean, Hans Molman has died multiple times. Now that you mention it, Oh, rats. Oh no, my brains. Barney gets burned alive. Homer kills all of those candy conventioneers. See you in hell, candy boys! Yeah, but they do have permanent death. Marvin Monroe, Bleeding Gums Murphy, they're both dead forever. Maud, Krabappel. Maybe there are clones. Maybe people do actually die, but then they're just replaced with duplicates. Barney's got tons of kids around town, and, and Hibbert has at least two long-lost brothers. I myself have spent years searching for my long-lost twin brother. He's a jazz musician or some such. Oh, Akira has so many jobs that it's safe to assume there are at least a few of him. I am Akira. Captain McAllister, too. I mean, what does he do? Does he steer a ship? Does he have a bait shop? Does he own a restaurant? Handsome Pete could easily be a failed Krusty clone. That old woman that says, can, can I, I come, come to? to? Failed Marge duplicate. Oh, and what about the guy with the Brooklyn accent who does every job in the town and changes his face multiple times? Those are all superior machines. You're just not a draw anymore. <laughs> That's for keeping me waiting. Just need to get the old wet dry back. This little guy writes mysteries. Hey kid, you look good with that cigarette. From it is. Yes, the writers call him Raphael. Thank you, well contributed. And in the Bobo episode, they flash forward to the distant future where there's a set of Homer clones pulling a cart. I mean, there are a lot of sets in Springfield. Nah, make it two. Way to go, bro. Wiggums, they all look the same. Same with the Van Houtens. And we're not even mentioning Shelbyville, which has like a bizarro version of every single person in Springfield. It's like, that's the control group for like this huge clone study. Right, when the Smithers who's deathly allergic to bees gets stung a bunch of times and dies, they just sub him out for one of the Smithers that can get stung a bunch without any ill effects. So Springfield is just a town of mentally unbalanced clones? Is that, is that what we're landing on? Yep, so who won? Was anyone? Keeping score? Actually, there's enough material in the show that you could pretty much contradict any argument we've just made if, if you wanted to. Even the stuff that contradicts the other stuff. It's a zero, 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 zero tie. What did we learn then? Why did we even do this? Well, there's no moral, Dan. It's just, just a, a bunch, bunch of stuff, stuff that happened. happened. Mono. Oh, man, what a great show. God, I know. So can you like close your eyes and see the little Bow Wow episode? Yeah. Like, really? Yeah. You go all the way to the current seasons. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I have to. I mean, I'm gonna tell okay. You. Hey everyone, it's the end of the episode, which means I finally get to eat this donut. Oh. If you like that episode, please oh like and subscribe. God. Please submit comments. Talk to us about how uncomfortable you are oh, with Michael Jesus masticating Christ. right in front of you. Whatever you want. Oh.